So Insidious The Last Case is a supernatural horror movie that comes out tomorrow. It's actually the fourth movie in this Insidious franchise that we got now. And if this movie good. It's a horror movie in January. The first horror movie in January. Of course it's not good. And that's like a no shit moment. There this was a point in time these Insidious movies were actually pretty good. I remember the first two movies were actually generally really good. Like this is like the cornerstone of supernatural horror movies. Then we had Insidious 3 and that movie was shit. Yeah, and now we have the last key comes out tomorrow. I just saw it. I was just like literally just like why does this movie need to happen? I just, why the best way to send this movie up is like this movie is literally like this movie feels like an entire subplot of an actual chapter in the Insidious franchise. Like it was like in like Insidious chapter four or something. I feel like this entire movie or the core of it could have been in that movie. Would have made it a lot better. Right, now we're stuck with this shit. So now you got to power through another hour thirty minute supernatural jump scare. Poor shit. I'm blessed on the pros and cons why I believe that Insidious The Last Keys comes out tomorrow. If you're going to brave the elements, snowstorms, and negative degree weather to see this movie, <laughs> good luck. Here's why. For all the acting in the movie, the acting is functional. There's not really much to talk about. Our main chick, Elise, yeah, she's bad. I feel like she's been carrying these Insidious movies since the beginning and since she's done the last two. She's still pretty good. As a matter of fact, I'll say this movie, it does give her her character a lot more layers in this movie. Give her a layer, give her depth and everything. I feel like the shine and positive I take away from this movie. Her, she was good. I like her backstory. I like how the origins of her powers and everything, what she went through in her childhood. That was actually explored and that's it really good. Didn't like that. Yeah, the rest of that character in the movie, just, just, you don't care about. You really don't. I literally don't know the name of any of the other characters except these two. Dude, only because they got on my nerves so much because they delivered the most awkward humor and made me step back and be like, with that humor in the other CDC movies, I can't remember. If it was, then it's shit then too. Then it ain't getting no better. But now the plot in the movie, more or less. The movie pretty much opens up with like, you know, exploring Elise's backstory and everything, what she went through. She's still seeing ghosts and everything like that. You know, the insidious shit. And fast forward a couple years later and now pretty much this guy is asking her to, you know, come check out paranormal shit that's happening in my house. And they come to find out that that's actually her house. Now she gotta go back to her and face the demons of her past and shit. Oh yeah, and another characters come in and you know they get tortured and shit. Yeah. Now, pros the movie, I'm gonna say that Elise, she's like I said, she's carrying this movie, she's carrying this franchise. Her character is the most interesting character of them all. That's, yeah, it's probably one of the only positives. It's also the element of the atmosphere in the movie. There are creepy moments in the movie, but that's like for only five minutes. First five minutes of the movie, genuinely creepy. You're like, okay, you know, it's been a while since I've seen supernatural horror movies and shit. Let me, you know, ease back into it. And I'm like, yeah, this is, we're going to get into some, you know, good shit. Yeah, well, wrong. Uh, then we get into the horror element of the movie. And the horror element is, uh, just drags on. I literally thought to myself, the year 2018 is going to be like, yeah, now we we gotta like drag on the horror, drag on the jump scare. We gotta build it up, build it up, build it up. Problem with that is that if you build it up too much, you have the audience sit back and be like, when is this gonna happen? When is the jump scare gonna happen? It just pulls them out of it. They're not scared no more, they're just impatient. Yeah, oh yeah, speaking of jump scares, they're in the movie. As a matter of fact, every scare that you saw in the trailer, that's what you get in this movie. Freddy Cougar, demon, key hands, shit, you know, cutting people's voice boxes off, shit like that. What you saw in the trailer is what you're getting in the movie, nothing more. So then the way the movie ends is just like oh my god the way to defeat the demon and everything it's the most underwhelming lackluster anticlimactic thing i've seen in a horror movie in a long time uh, and then the way the movie actually fully ends with the last little credit scene and everything it sets up for the next movie and makes me really be like what was the point of this movie it makes me feel like this movie feels like a spin-off of the insidious franchise it's not a new chapter in the movie it's not like the last movie it's just like it's just something there it's at the end of the day insidious the last keys it's not the last movie it's literally a movie that you do not have to watch i feel like when these insidious movies come out as a whole like a whole dvd box set or something but it'll be the movie that you're just like it's skip don't gotta watch that at least it's the only interesting character you're gonna care about in the movie but as far as the scares and the paranormal activity shit that happens in it you've seen it done before and you've seen it done better our first horror movie in january and of course it's going to be and city is the last keys is a two out of ten which means you're not gonna remember it at all uh, and as always guys subscribe until next time Here they come.